how to beat bangers in pickleball. If people continuously drive the ball at you and you're not able to defend yourself, we're gonna put a stop to that today. The most common thing my students say, people are slamming it at me and I'm trying to slow it down by putting it in the kitchen. Why do they keep hitting it hard? That's the exact opposite thing you wanna do. If people are slamming it at you, you need to show that you can handle it and hit hard back so they stop. This is the correct way to deal with bangers. This is the wrong way to deal with bangers. The first thing we need to talk about is how we're holding the paddle with our arm. The way beginners do it, and the reason the ball just keeps popping up, is their paddle is sideways like this. So wherever the ball comes, they're kind of just blocking it back. Notice I have no movement in my wrist. I only have movement in my arm. The way pros do it is they have a nice and relaxed arm here and their paddle sits more upright. So when I'm defending drives, I'm defending them like this and I'm allowing my wrist, right when the ball's about to hit me, to snap down. This gets the ball down. When your arm is sideways, I can't do that. It's just gonna pop up and give them another shot. This concept works whether somebody's driving the ball at you from the baseline like you just saw, or if you're in a hands battle at the net. You always wanna get on top and hit down on the ball rather than this sideways. Here's a quick pro tip if somebody has a really good drive and you just can't even handle it. Meaning it's hitting into the net, it's popping off your paddle, it's going everywhere you don't want it to go. That means it's all about timing. So when somebody's driving the ball at you, the time for you to go forward to hit it is where the error is, which is causing you to be late or early, which is making you miss. The pro tip is right when they're about to drive, I want you to have your arm almost fully extended. So instead of you going to the ball, you're just going to be outright and kind of just catch it out here. This is gonna remove the latency and possible error from you having to time it. The disadvantage to this is you don't have nearly as much power out here you get way more power going like that. However, if you're missing and giving away a ton of free points, it's best to just get the ball back in play. Here's the difference. Let's say I can handle Zach's drive all day. I wanna get a lot of power on it. I'm gonna start here and snap to it. Now we're gonna pretend Zach magically got a really good drive. I'm gonna show you how I would handle it. I'm gonna catch it really far out in front. Here's another angle of the more powerful, aggressive way. Here's an angle of the more passive way that I will never miss. Here we go. Just out in front and catching it. The reason your opponents are able to hit really strong drives at you stems from you not hitting a good return. So we're gonna go over the fundamentals of how to hit a good return and what you should be looking for. Starting with the fundamentals, if the ball is served to my backhand, I personally like to use a two-handed backhand. I'm going to get no power if I'm out here or out here hitting the ball. I need to get my foot behind the ball. So as the ball's coming in, I'm gonna get my foot and really turn my hips to hit this ball. That will allow me to hit and run through with my momentum. I can ensure that if I do that one step with my foot, my return will be solid, a flat, hard shot for my opponent to handle. For my forehand, at maximum power. I don't want to be in this open stance. I want to be stepping to the ball in this closed stance, really driving it, not running through it. Drive, then go. I'm in no rush to get to the kitchen super fast. I'd rather hit a super solid return that they won't be able to tee off on. So the key takeaways, if somebody has a really good drive, make sure you're hitting a great deep return so they're forced to drop it. Zach's gonna serve some to me. Check out how deep and low my returns are. It's gonna make for a very hard drive for him. Now we have Zach in the transition area. This is typically where bangers love to bang, especially tennis players, because if you can't defend their first ball effectively like this, they're just gonna have a field day and tee off on you. 
I need to show him that I have no problem handling the shot, so his only other option is to hit a drop. If I don't show him this, he might as well do it all game. He'll win. Ugh. Now I'm going to try and soften it up like amateur players think is the best option. Oh, almost took my eye out. Now we're going to cover how to deal with bangers at the net. If somebody's good at attacking, especially if the ball is off the bounce, their bread and butter is making you have to flip your paddle either forehand or backhand. If they do this to you and you don't know which side it's coming on, that will be the death of you. How do we counteract this? There's two ways. The first one is a slide and the second one is a scorpion. I'm gonna explain both. The first thing we need to do is we need to start off by identifying which ball is the ball that we're gonna get attacked on. So right now I'm dinking good, everything's great. Pretend there's four of us. As soon as the dink goes to Zach like this, a dead dink like that where it sits up and it's floating and he has time to make a decision. So he can hold behind the ball and he can make a conscious decision I'm going to speed this up. I, as a player, have to be able to identify that myself or my partner has hit a bad dink and that it's probably going to get sped up. If I can't tell the difference in that, I'm going to lose every time. This is what the slide looks like. So we're dinking, okay, we're dinking. All right, on this next ball, I hit a really bad dink. I know I'm gonna get it attacked. What did I do there? I identified that I hit Zach, a dead dink, and that he's probably going to attack me. So I stood here till the last possible second until Zach committed that he's going to speed it up at me. So he knows he's going to speed it up and I know, but I don't want to show him anything until right when he's about to hit it, then I'm going to step and expect to hit a forehand. The reason I slide is because when I do slide, I no longer have to and guess where he's going to hit it. I slide so everything is all forehand. Just have to locate where the ball is. If he attacks it, I'm all the way here covering all of it. And if the ball's coming out here, I can slide out of the way so it passes me. I'm using the sideline as an extra teammate. The most common spot for my opponent to attack when he has that dead dink is usually my paddle side shoulder right here. This is the most awkward spot, especially when he has a lot of time. So when I step out of the way, when I step, my paddle is instantly covering where my shoulder would be. My shoulder's here, I step, now it's a free forehand. I know you're probably thinking, if I slide way out here, it leaves a gigantic gap in the middle. Not the case if I have a competent partner. I have Zach here, so I'm not too sure. Let's pretend we're dinking and a dead dink is in front of me. I accidentally hit a really bad ball and me and Zach as a team both know the speed up is coming. I am going to slide all over here and Zach is going to cover the middle. Since Zach is the diagonal player from him, it's his job to get the middle. It's not my job to guess. My only duty is to cover this sideline. If I was right-handed, I would still slide and just hit all backhands. Since I'm lefty, I slide and hit all forehands. It's important to talk with your partner and have this chemistry. Let's say Zach hits a bad dink in front of him. He knows he's gonna get sped up right when the person commits. Zach sliding and I'm covering. That covers every gap. You may be thinking, if we're like this, it leaves the entire side of that court open. That's true. If anybody hits the ball hard that way, it's out by 100 miles. However, if they do hit a dink that way, it's very easy for me to recover. They can't hit an aggressive enough dink that I can't get it. Another way we can defend ourselves is the scorpion. It accomplishes the exact same thing as the slide, but it adds some variety into your game. Oh, I hit that dead dink, I know it's coming. Last second, I wait till he commits. I go down. Another great time I love to use this shot instead of the slide is if Zach, my opponent, is cross-court thinking with my partner. Let's say they've been in a long rally. Especially if Zach is able to take some of the dinks out of the air, I'm anticipating that when he gets one high enough, he's gonna flick it at me and attack me. This is what I'm talking about. Let's say me and Zach are in a long dink rally, okay? He's getting my balls out of the air. He's doing this. He's getting my balls out of the air. Good, 
Now the next ball, I'm expecting that shot. So if I see him taking balls out of the air, pretend I'm over there, I'm expecting him to eventually attack one of them at me. This is when the scorpion works best because if he's flicking a ball at me, it's going to be one where he's reaching and leaning in. So it has to come high. That's the only option for it to come up here. So by me getting down, it gives me a free overhead. We're dinking. All right, now here's the ball. He gets a high ball, he's gonna flick. 